One of the gentlemen took her round the corner and he, he, tried to, he tried to kiss her. The gentleman that you saw coming up to talk to her, he was actually part of the production crew. That he came up and rescued her from the, from the man that was just basically taking advantage of a, of a woman who appeared to his eyes to be drunk and incapable. The, the story was that she'd, um, she'd been out in town with a group of friends. They'd all had, had stuff to drink and uh, her friends had gone and her battery had run out on her phone. She didn't know where she was. She was a stranger in a strange town. Um, I saw this yesterday and it really resonated with me not because it was broad daylight it's the kind of thing you hear about on Friday and Saturday night in towns um, but it made me feel so sad because there was a certain inevitability to it um, obviously the bit that we showed there what was edited but even the producer him the director of the film himself said that the, the bits that they've shown online weren't the worst bits um, mm. what, what, what do you make of that Nadia well, I just found it so depressing um, that because we we talk about this a lot, don't we, on on this show about how how we keep safe and, and yeah. And, and the thing is, I always stand up and say, oh, but you know, we can't just expect that because we're out and drunk and every man is an animal and every man's going to do. It. But they were said that they had to. They actually edited out the worst, yeah. and this was the easiest stuff. I mean, you know, the thing is, we were talking this morning, weren't we, about how we've kept ourselves, how to keep safe, and. Um, you know, we all like a good drink, we all like to go out, we all like to have fun, but it's all those things that you do to keep yourself safe in that situation. You know, make sure that you stay with the group, make sure that you get, you've got money in your cab. I mean, I remember as a kid, I always had money in my boot, you yeah. know, to get myself yeah, a cab yeah. home, not to walk home um, But a lot alone. of that was parental training, wasn't yeah. it? And, yeah. and coaching, if you like. Yeah. Yeah, but and yeah. Uh, what I was going to say is one of the things that we obviously mm. we, we discuss these things before we come to air, just to you know uh, make sure that we're all, all either on the same page or definitely not, um, is the fact that we educate women, but surely we should be educating men because it's the. Well, this the, is what I, this is this is what I was going to say. The thing is, we all sit here and go, now should that girl have been drunk? Should she have yeah. worn that top? Should you? And my thing is, who who's bringing up those boys? mums are yeah right so we have to be really careful about the language we use around young boys because i think subliminally it goes in now yes. now we could talk about um you know oh like we are now oh well you know should she have been drinking that much and mm, you know oh she put herself at risk wearing a dress like that and we're actually saying that for care for the girl but i think for boys at the feet you know little babies yeah. the kids growing up they're hearing their mother's tones that mm, well, you know, that's a bit her fault. He, she was silly to be out drunk and talking to men like that, but actually those men, every single mm. one of them to me, was absolutely disgusting. Yeah, predatory. Because they knew very well she was drunk, they knew yeah. very well she was drunk. There's no way that girl would have come and spoken to them in any training in, if she wasn't drunk. That's, that's mm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm always a little bit wary of these social experiments because... I just think for every guy that we've seen on there, mm. and I don't think all of them, uh, you know, we don't know that he wasn't saying there might have been a wide open staircase and he might have just been saying, just come and sit down because you're drunk. He might have been trying to help her in some way. The guys that are saying, come to a bar and have a drink with us, that's kind of like the sort of, you know, she's not, she's not falling over. Mm. She's being friendly. She's having a chat. They might have just been... Being friendly, but I don't like to leap to friendly. that thing that all men mm. are wishing harm on this girl. Mm. And a hell of a lot of men will have walked past her thinking, I'm not going to go there because if I approach her, I'm going to look but like I'm... all those men were creeps. You know, the last one those, those men, the men that walked by were. Really yeah. and, and I sympathise for men that might want to stop and yeah. be worried that they'd be accused of something. But they were but, but let's OK, so let's place her in a wine bar, if those things exist anymore. Let's place her in a wine bar, you know, chatting at the bar, blah, 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 and a bloke comes up and says, can I get you another drink? Is that a man being abhorrent or is that a man th thinking, oh, there's a very pretty girl here who I would like to see again and date and I will buy her a drink and maybe we'll get on and swap phone numbers? But mm. as with that last example, I mean, he really was grouping her. Oh, it no, wasn't I'm just, a, que it wasn't just a question of just saying, will you have a drink? I'm not talking about that. There were a couple of examples in there yeah. where they just said, let's go to a bar and have another drink. Well, there are also some examples. Come back down <clears> but I think we have to come way. back down to the fact, as, as, as parents, we have, to, we have to instruct our children, mm. and still you're not going to instruct them, uh, both girls and boys and the rights and wrongs. I mean, my mum and dad gave me so many brilliant things to live by to make sure that I didn't get attacked. And yet I did, at 14 years old, coming home from school, broad daylight, somebody coming up behind me, 
got me, dragged me, took me down the hill. I was literally round the corner from mm. my house. I mean, thank goodness I managed to fight him off and ran into my parents' arms back at home. But, um, but that was with all of that information given to me mm. and still it was a mess. So if, if we, you know, we are putting our own children in danger if we don't. Mm. If we don't. Mm. And I think as well, it's interesting. You know, so. we're talking about edu educating boys. I think even men at home. If you're if you're listening, um, just even making a woman feel uncomfortable is something that maybe men don't bear in mind. Um, you know, if you if a woman is walking alone down a street and a man is walking behind her, I've had it myself. And you're instantly thinking, he's following me. He's following me. Mm. He might not be. He might just be living the, in the same sort of area as you. Mm. Cross the road. Hang back a little bit and just be mm. aware that you it's could like, be I making say, somebody I'm, I'm feel sweet uncomfortable. Daughters. And I always say to them, you know, mm. in an ideal world, you could walk naked, you yeah. could drink what you want. It's not an ideal world, it's a real world, and you have to take responsibility Respons for your own safety. Absolutely. And have your wits about you. At all times.